Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Raycon. You know, for a show that had to end its six seasons on a Yahoo-run streaming service that died like a month or two after the show ended, Community feels surprisingly relevant. After finally coming to Netflix last month, it managed to stick around in the top 10 on the site for a surprisingly long time, especially considering how low rated it was when it was actually on the air. I've loved Community since 2009. Like, I actually remember watching the pilot as it aired on TV, like on actual live network television, which makes me feel really old. But the point is, Community still being as discussed and relevant as it is five years after being pretty unceremoniously cancelled on Yahoo's screen should tell you a lot about just how great the show actually was, and also how unique it ended up being. At its best, Community was a smart and insanely fast-paced blend of traditional sitcoms, TV and film parody, and character-driven drama. I always loved how the same show that could do these very small-scale but well-written episodes about like Troy turning 21 and becoming disillusioned with the adult world that he thought he was dying to enter could also do a high-concept episode about a pillow fight that escalates into like a school-wide war, all edited in the style of a Ken Burns documentary. It was never a show that lacked ambition, and I think the episode I'm talking about this week, Season 1's Modern Warfare, was the first to really put the full extent of that ambition on screen. Don't get me wrong, the season already had some really great episodes. Debate 109 was an early indication of how absurd the show would get, and Contemporary American Poultry did one of the show's earliest movie parodies, with a great riff on Goodfellas, just to name a couple. But I do really think it was with Modern Warfare that Dan Harmon and company announced to the world what kind of show they were making. I think the show would eventually go on to surpass the episode in season 2 and beyond, but nothing could ever replicate just how exciting and fresh that episode felt. To me, it's still the quintessential episode of the show. The episode starts with a very simple premise. Greendale's spring fling gets way out of hand when the dean offers a prize that's way too good, priority class registration and the students take it deathly seriously. So in less than three minutes, including the theme song, the entire thing is already set up. From there, the show does what it would go on to do successfully so often, creating this funny, weird world that still fits firmly within the show's existing universe, but for that episode, operates under totally different rules. When Jeff wakes up from his nap and finds the school a post-apocalyptic paintball nightmare, the entire show's tone shifts with it. Modern Warfare's version of Greendale is heavily inspired by 80s action movies, especially Die Hard and Predator. But it goes beyond that too. The world of this episode, with its many alliances and double crosses, feels surprisingly well realized, like they could have set a whole season of a show here. But I think that's true of a lot of community episodes, like the time loop concept of remedial chaos theory, or the episode where everyone's worth is determined by their ratings on an app, which they did before Black Mirror by the way. But at the end of every episode, things are reset and Greendale is able to be used in a totally different way next time around. Sure, the idea of this light reset at the end of the episode is how most sitcoms operate, but few shows take advantage of it like Community did. Something like Parks and Rec, in its best seasons, was probably more consistent than Community, but I think I'll always give Community the slight edge because it took much bigger chances. Sometimes those paid off and sometimes they fell a little flat, but at the end of the day, there was nothing else like it on network TV. Another thing I find interesting about Modern Warfare that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough is how it illustrates Community's approach to romantic subplots. Jeff and Britta, who are introduced to us in the pilot as like the main romantic pairing, sleep with each other for the first time in the middle of the episode. But this is pretty far from Jim and Pam on The Office finally kissing at the end of Casino Night or Sam and Diane getting together in a cheer season finale. There's basically no fanfare at all. Like it isn't really a big deal in the context of the episode. And this is almost always how the show approached pairing off its characters. Unlike a show like Friends, it's more than happy to let its romantic pairings play out quietly or in the background. A season later, it would be casually revealed that Jeff and Britta continued sleeping 
getting together after this in secret and everyone just kind of shrugs it off. This isn't to say that Community isn't interested in its characters. I think the show is actually really invested in giving us a deeper understanding of them and having them grow and change throughout the seasons, but it was almost never a show that put their love lives in the foreground at all. Whether you think that was a good thing or a missed opportunity, I do think that it makes it kind of unique as an NBC sitcom. Even something like Seinfeld, whose characters were way too petty to maintain relationships for long, still made Jerry, Elaine, and George's dating lives a really important aspect of the show. In Community, that's just rarely the case. And you can't talk about Modern Warfare without mentioning the direction. It's not often that a network sitcom serves as a launching pad for multiple blockbuster directors, but that's definitely the case here. Justin Lin, who would go on to direct Star Trek Beyond and a few Fast and Furious movies, does a really great job taking this sitcom budget and making the scope of the episode feel like a big action movie. It probably helps that the whole episode is basically contained to the school set, which allowed the show to spend its money on stunts and even a big paint explosion. The Russo brothers would continue the paintball tradition in season two, but it's modern warfare that really set the template. The cast is really great too. While the show would eventually become infamous for losing cast members left and right, everyone is at the top of their games here. Except maybe Joel McHale, who I think got better as the show went along, but wasn't much of an actor in season one, but I love those first scenes where Jeff is plunged into this paintball world, and Donald Glover's line reading Jeff of, Wing, you son of a bitch, will pretty much always make me laugh. It's also a great episode for Britta, who's kind of halfway there in her transformation from the boring straight woman of the group in the early episodes, to the weirder, far more funny version of her that we get for the rest of the show. It also might be my favorite Chang episode. Chang is a character I don't think they ever quite knew how to use after season one, but there was a reason they tried so hard to make him work over and over again, because he is really good in this first season. And the John Woo style reveal of his paintball machine gun will always be one of the first things I think of when I think community. In some ways, Modern Warfare is a strange episode to go back to, because so many of the things that felt weird and surprising about it when I was 16 became so par for the course for the show afterwards. Still, I think it holds up surprisingly well. So many of the little gags from Pierce betraying Starburns or the Dean trying to give Jeff a DVD player that he proudly says comes with a remote are still really great, even if stuff like taking shots at Glee definitely dates the episode a bit. In the end though, I wouldn't be surprised if Modern Warfare is always held up as a classic sitcom episode. That late 2000s lineup of The Office, Parks and Recreation, 30 Rock, and Community now kind of feel like the final glory days of network TV sitcoms. Nothing on NBC has come anywhere close to matching those Thursday nights since. And with all of these companies slowly transitioning over to their own streaming platforms, something tells me nothing ever will, at least on broadcast television. And Community was the most unique show in that pretty amazing lineup. I think Modern Warfare is probably the best example of why. And you know, with the show now being so easily available to watch on your phone, why not take advantage of that by watching it with some brand new wireless earbuds? You shouldn't have to like take out a loan to get quality earbuds, and with Raycon, that's definitely not a problem. They sent me a pair of their everyday E25s to test out, and I've been super impressed with the audio quality. I've had some trouble with earbuds in the past, but these fit my ears really comfortably, and they come with six different gel tips just to make sure you get the fit that you want. They're water resistant, can make phone calls, and the latest model is their best one yet with six hours of playtime. They have really easy, fast Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. And now they even come in a bunch of different colors, all at half the price of other premium earbud brands for the same sound quality. To try them out and get 15% off, go to buyraycon.com midnight that's buyraycon.com slash midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once 
because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes. To